What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're going to talk about some of the equipment that I use to go long line trolling for crappie this time of year. February, you notice a lot of guys starting to pull jigs behind their boat. If you're new to this technique, just sit back and I'm going to take you through every bit of equipment that I use on my boat to make it a lot easier. So let's head on over to the back of the boat and get started. Alright, here we are at the back of the boat. This is where all the action takes place. This is where a lot of important stuff you need goes. Uh, we start out by talking about rod holders. Everybody knows you got to have a set of rod holders. Man, I use eight. I fish eight rods out the back of the boat, four on each side. I use Driftmaster rod holders. These things are high quality. I don't know how much they cost now. I'm sure they're a lot more than what I, I paid for them when I bought them 10 plus years ago. They're just like they were I, when I got them. They, they take a pounding, they last. Buy, go buy you something. You know, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna do this stuff, go buy you something that's gonna last, okay? There's nothing worse than getting out on the water and have to fiddle around with stuff that don't hold up, something different, something broke every time. There's nothing more aggravating than that. Do yourself a favor, go get some good. There's other brands out there too that are just as good. This is what I bought and this is what I stick with. I don't get paid by any of these people. Any of this stuff I'm talking about, brand names, I don't get paid by none of these people, okay? Simple, it's simple to go on. You gotta have this piece. This piece keeps it locked from spinning. You just set it on this piece here that it stays permanently attached to the boat, takes up very little space, doesn't get in the way. Uh, there you go, you get it started, you run it down as far as you can, as far as it'll go, and then you just back it off to where the rod holders are in the place where you want them to go. You pick the closest serration on this, right there, lock it in. Ah, it might be the next one over. There we go. Get you a pair. Of... And that's solid, and that's 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 how quick it is to put it on here. Um, it's solid. Got another one on the other side, fully adjustable. These holders, you can adjust them this way and you can adjust them this way with the way it's set up. It's, it's, a, it's a great setup. You got them set up where your rods go in here. And what you want is you want an even spread. You want this rod going pretty much straight out, okay? Parallel to the boat, straight out. This one, you want it perpendicular to the boat. You want it 90 degrees straight out. And these two in the middle you can, you can adjust those to where you got an equal distance between each rod tip, okay? And that's pretty much it for the rod holder. Now, let's move up to some, some, uh, some talk about some rods and some reels. Uh, let me start out by saying, this ain't bass fishing, okay? You don't need to go spend $100 on a rod and another $150 on a reel. All, you do, all these rods and reels are doing is holding line. That's all they're doing. You're not casting them all day long. Yeah, they make some high quality long line and rods that you're gonna pay a lot of money for. But I'm gonna tell you what, you catch just as many fish with these and I have. I bought these rods, God knows, back when they were cheap, you could get these rods as I have. These are pinnacle limit rods. I don't think they even make them anymore. Oh man, they were less than $20 a piece. Uh, I think Grizzly Jig had a package on them. You could buy four any length you wanted for 80 bucks. So I bought eight. So I got $160 in eight rods. They're all the same. To me, having the same brand rod, same brand reels, 
the same everything and on every rod and reel, it, it makes a huge difference to me. Now, you may mix and match and do whatever you want and work with what you got. It'll all work, but this is what I do. I found this to work the best for me. I got spares on the boat in case of one of these cheap reels go out. These reels are less than 20 bucks a piece. I think these reels were like 12 bucks a piece. They're cheap, but I don't spend all day casting and reeling them, so I don't care. Uh, anyway, let's talk about the rod. Like I said, it's a pinnacle limit. This is an eight foot rod. These are the ones that go in the middle. These are the shortest rod. There's some graphite composite, or so they say, foam handles, Nothing, nothing special about them at all. Let's go to the reel. These are Shimano R2000, 2000 size reel. You can use 1000 size reel. You can use whatever you want. Just, I would suggest having them all the same. Um, this, it's got the drag system in the back. You want them to hold enough line where you can get, I don't know, 100 feet of line out the back. Don't get some itty bitty reel that you're not going to have enough line on because you let out a lot of line. One thing that I like to talk about these reels, one thing that helps out a lot, not all spinning reels have this feature on it, but that's this little clip right here on the side of your spool. A lot of people don't know what that's for. Now, actually, at one point in time, I didn't know what it was for. But what it does is it sets the length out on the line that you have, and that's good until you break off and have to retie and everything, but still, this is great because before you even leave the house, you can set these rods up where they go in the rod holders and you can pull, you can pull your line out, the distance, whatever distance you want to be fishing at, and you can lock that line in this little spot right here. And now you don't have to cast, you just flip the bale, let the bait drop, and it'll feed itself out until it gets to here, it won't feed out anymore. So you're consistently putting the bait out at the same distance from the boat every time. That's one of the variables you don't have to deal with. They all running the same distance behind the boat. I generally run about 50 feet behind the boat, every one of them. So that's one good thing. Uh, I'm using four pound test line. There's nothing special about that. It's a four pound mono. Crappy Max from Bass Pro. Once again, these people don't pay me anything. I'm not pushing any brand or type of line. You use what you want to use. Like I said, though, be consistent. Put the same thing on every line because it makes a difference. The type line, mono. Your bait's going to ride a certain depth behind the boat. All other variables being the same. You switch to fluorocarbon, it's not going to run the same, same depth as mono. Mono floats, fluoro sinks. The diameter of your line, I use four-pound test. Dude, I, I catch everything. I catch two-pound crappy on four-pound line. I've caught hybrids on four-pound line. I've caught striper, catfish on four-pound line. You just have to. You just can't be horsing any big fish. And you, you, it's going to handle any crappy you catch pretty much. Good thing about it is, if you get hung up in something, it breaks. Okay, so you, you that's the key thing, trolling. You want to be trolling. You don't ever want to stop the boat for anything, for any reason, unless it's an emergency. You got eight lines out. What do you think is going to happen when you stop the boat to take care of anything? They all going to hang up. And then you got a mess on your hands. So you want something that's going to do the job, get the fish in the boat. But if it does get hung, and you will get hung, or you catch in some monster fish that you don't want back there messing up your spread, have something that's going to break off before it gets to that point, okay? That's why I use four-pound line. You use whatever you want. It's all good. Let's see, what else we got back here in the back? All right, so that's, that about covers it back here in the back, uh, except for one important piece of equipment, and we'll get to that when we move up to the front. So let's head on up to the front of the boat. Okay, here we are up here at the front of the boat. Now, the one thing I got up here in the front 
that goes in the back normally. I just got it up here in the front because this is how I've been fishing here lately. Right here. You spend a lot of time in this seat. My suggestion is to go find you something that's comfortable and you can sit in all day long. Like I said, this is the Millennium Marine seat, real popular. There's a reason why they're popular. There's a reason why a lot of people use them. Yes, they're not cheap. They're not that bad. This is something that's going to last you a long time. It's comfortable. I can sit in it all day. Um, it's wide. It's plenty wide. I mean, it is for me. Um, but anyway, this bad boy goes in the back seat post, and you spend a lot of time in it. So get you something that's going to work for you. Uh, okay, we're up here in the front now. Now let's start covering some stuff. Before we get started with the stuff I want to show you up here in the front, let's talk about the baits. Okay, once again, you don't need anything. There's tons of bait out here that you can use. These right here. Triple ripple grub, black blue body with a chartreuse tail. Man, let me tell you something. I've put thousands of crappie in the boat on just that one jig. This is a three inch variety. You can, I, I started out using the little tiny ones. I did all right and I just, they were out of the tiny ones one time so I went up to a two inch. Started using two inchers. Fish started getting bigger. I was like, hmm. I went up to a three inch. So that's why I, I, I use these three inch Bass Pro all day long. Actually, I pour my own a lot of times, but you know, you can't beat this, man. These things last you a long time. Uh, you don't tear up that many baits trolling. But anyway, go get you three or four packs of these bad boys, three inch. They make them in all different colors, but like I said, man, if they not biting that, I got other colors I throw too, but day in and day out for consistency on my body of water, this dude right here, nothing comes close. But you use what you want to use. Like you say, you got to keep changing things and changing things. Everybody's situation is different. And I can't stress that enough, man. Don't, don't take specific things I'm telling you. Don't, don't. Don't take them as chiseled in stone because, man, I got confidence in these baits. I got confidence in my whole setup. I got confidence in what I do. I know when I go, I'm going to catch fish. So, and that just comes from doing it a long time. Uh, anyway, let's move on up here to other things. Let me tell you something that's in the front of this boat that has revolutionized trolling, has changed the game trolling any kind of trolling particularly trolling for crappy long line trolling there's not there hadn't been a single thing come along in the last 50 years that has changed the game as much as a trolling motor that has autopilot has cruise control I'm gonna tell you what, you won't find any, there's nothing, if I had to give up everything on my boat but one thing, as far as, you know, electronics go, that'd be, that'd be one thing that I kept. If that thing broke today, if it got fried and tore up, no way I could get it fixed, I'd go tomorrow and buy another one. That's how it changes. You can sit in the boat, you can run a trolling motor by hand or by foot, and. You know, you can mess around with that all day long if you want to. But I'm going to tell you, you get one of these, save your money. If you're going to save your money and buy one piece of equipment, to go, let that be the first thing you buy. It makes that much of a difference. I'm telling you, you use it, you won't never go back. It plays an important role in how efficient you are. Think about put all right, think about this scenario. You back here in your 
little tin boat and you got your trolling motor going, you know, everything's cool and you catch a fish here, you catch a fish there. Next thing you know, you get a mess, you get two on at one time, okay? You get them messed up. They get crossed up or you catch a, you get into a hybrid catfish. He gets you, he gets you all jacked up back there, okay? What you gonna do now, okay? You got, you gotta stop fishing. You got to get that mess in the boat and get it straightened out. Meanwhile, nobody's minding the trolling motor. You don't know how fast you're going. You don't know where you're mm -hmm. going. There's nothing better than sitting down, taking your time, straightening out a mess, and you're still fishing while you're doing it. This thing right here, you can run a track. You can lay it down. You can record it. You pick up a bunch of fish going that way, you can turn right around and run the exact same path you just did and stay on the fish. You don't, I mean, when you're trolling, man, these, these fish are not, they're not everywhere. <laughs> they're, 90% of the time, they're gonna be over a channel or a ditch. That's where the bait are. That's where the fish are gonna be. If you get off of that channel, off of that creek, off of that ditch, whatever it is that they're following, you get off of that 20 feet, you're not gonna catch anything. It's that simple. And it's a real easy thing to do. I'll show you how to do it with, with the maps. But that trolling motor, man, I'm gonna tell you what, you can, you can use advanced autopilot, you can point this thing in a certain direction and you can forget about it. You can walk away from it. You don't have to worry about steering. All you got to do is look over your shoulder every now and then and make sure you're not running into anybody else out there fishing. Um, speed is one of the most important things that you use to set the depth on your bait, okay? That's one of the things that you leave as variable that you can control. It's simple. You set what speed you want on that trolling motor and you're going to pull your jigs at that speed all the time. You get wind blowing, you get a headwind, you get a tailwind, you get a crosswind. I don't care how the wind's blowing. And the wind's gonna blow this time of year. That trolling motor compensates for it constantly. It's constantly ramping up, ramping down. You can look at your GPS speed while you're fishing. It's not gonna vary more than a tenth of a mile an hour. Okay? And the only thing that's gonna make it vary that much is if you get in the gusty winds where it's gusting real bad for just a short period of time. I'm gonna tell you, man, save you money. It's worth every penny. Now this model that I got, of course, this is, this is Minn Kota's. I don't keep up with all the different brands. I got a Minn Kota. This is the Cadillac model. This is the Ulterra. This is one that stows and, and deploys by itself. But that's, you know, and, and another thing too is, is you got this remote. This remote right here, you can control it with the foot pedal, and that's what I do when I'm in front up here, and when I'm, you know, fishing brush piles and stuff, and I need, I need my hands free to fish. But when you're trolling, first of all, you get the back of the boat. The trolling motor's up here. Some foot controls do have long enough cords that you can get to the back of the boat. But man, I'm gonna tell you what, this thing right here, you can control everything from this remote sitting in that chair back there, and you don't even have to worry about what's going on up here. So. Very important piece of equipment. Like I said, it has changed long line for the better. One more important piece of equipment that you need, really, especially, especially if you're fishing with somebody else. Um, due, due to the fact that you got these long poles, I mean, my longest one is 12 foot. Sometimes swinging a fish in the boat isn't a real good option. You can't, you know, let's just say you need a long net. You need a net with a long pole on it. And that's what you see all the time. You see them. Crappy fishermen have got those nets. They're usually sitting in the boat up like this where everybody in the world can see them. And then when you see that net come down, you know he's, he's fit. It's called the, what do you call it? The net pattern. You see them nets go down. You know he caught a fish. Anyway, this is one that I bought, and I really don't use it that much when I'm by myself. I just flip my fish into the boat. It's, it's a hassle by yourself. 
But if you got somebody with you, man, this you can't beat one of these with a long handle. Now it's got a long. I don't have the handle attached to it right now. But it's long. It's long enough to get out and get that fish. I got some videos of it. You'll see. It's long enough to reach out there and get a fish without getting your your rod all straight up in the air and. It's just it's just so much easier with a net when you've got somebody to handle it. Let me suggest getting one of these nets, these rubber nets. Dude, this this stuff here rocks, man. You can't beat a rubber net. You don't have to worry about your hook getting caught in it. Um, you know, it's just, you, I've caught fish with tr with bait that got treble hooks in it, man. It, it just it's a breeze, man. You don't get that. You know what I'm talking about. Those hook barbs get down into a fabric net, nylon or whatever it's made out of, and it splits those threads, and you, you're going to play hell trying to get it back out. This thing is great. So, man, this thing, I've had this thing for whew, 10 years. It ain't dry rod. It's, it's, it's a great net. They make them out there. Just find you one. Make sure it's got a long handle on it. Keep it handy. You can thank me later. All right. So one more thing we need to cover here is mapping. It's another important thing. Uh, it tells you where you are and where you've been. That's the main point. Uh, I'm running, I run hummingbirds as far as my mapping, the side imaging, down imaging, 2D sonar. I run hummingbirds. This is a Solix unit I got back at Helm. And uh, so anyway, here's a, here's a creek typical that you would troll down. Like I said, there's a, there's plenty of places you can troll and catch fish, but if you're starting out and don't know where to go, get you a map, and you want to troll right down the middle of the creek or the channel or whatever you want to call it. This is a Lake Master map. You know, look at the contour lines and stuff, and you can kind of see where the channel goes. You can see the paths that I've taken down through here, and it's pretty much right down the channel you can look at the contour lines and see how they're shaped and you can pick out you can see it goes here it kind of swings out to the right a little bit and then back across to the left and then back up in here to the back and that's where you want to troll that's where you want to be um, and if you can lay tracks down on your map like this one and you can see you know, when you start catching fish, you just run that same path over and over again. And you can narrow it down. You get in these places here and you notice, you pay attention, start marking every time. Lay a waypoint down every time you catch a fish. After a few, after an hour or two of fishing, you'll notice all them waypoints are showing up in pretty much the same area of the channel. So you can start tightening up. You know, you can start tightening up your the paths, you can get to where you're almost running in a constant circle all the time because you've narrowed it down to exactly where they are and you can really start uh, catching fish a whole lot quicker. This is the same picture. This is my forward unit up here that I use. It's got Navionics maps on here and they're a little different the way they show the channel. You can see the main river channel there in that brownish khaki looking color there. That's the main river channel but you can you can zoom in on this and you can see that they have a dashed, I don't know if you can see in the video or not, but it's a dashed line that runs right up in this creek channel showing you where the, the channel is. And this is the same, this is the same one we looked at on the Lake Master map. Uh, I don't know, man. There's sometimes, and you can see there's where that channel swings off to the right and it swings back across to the left. Uh, let's see if I can get a little better picture there. How about that? But you can see that dashed line. That's a creek channel. And Navy Onyx is pretty good about being dead on, man, dead on with the channels. Just stay right there on that dotted line. That's all you got to do. Now, some of these, uh, some of these coves and cuts and stuff, they're not going to have a marked out 
a channel or ditch or whatever on there. So you kind of have to find it yourself. And the way you do that is you look at the contour lines and you try to get into the deepest, deepest point and you just start zigzagging back and forth. Um, and if you, if you can, if there's any type of ditch or any kind of, uh, depression channel, whatever you want to call it, um, and you look at your side scan sonar, you can see every time you cross it, you can, you can see it. And every time you cross it, just drop a waypoint. And uh, you'll see those waypoints line up, man, and then you just, you just troll from one waypoint to the next to stay over, over where you want to be. It's pretty cool. It's pretty simple. It's a lot to digest, and it's a lot to... I don't know, until you get out on the water, I mean, it sounds easy sitting here talking about it, but when you get out on the water, you'll find out it's, it's, it can be challenging, but once you figure it out and once you get a handle on it, man, it's, it's gravy. It's gravy. You just load the boat down with meat.